I recently shared with you that I'll be quitting my college career to homeschool. I'm incredibly blessed that my husband has always supported me in this desire. But this decision will take away our only stable income and our health insurance. Thankfully, through minimalism, we've been downsizing and finding ways to save more and purchase less. But now that our budgets will be cut dramatically, I've been thinking of ways that we can cut our expenses even further. So today I'll be sharing with you the 12 ways that I plan to save more money after quitting my full-time job. No, we're not planning on selling our house and living in a van. By no means are we going to extreme measures, but hopefully these ideas will be helpful to you if you could use a bit more cash in your savings. Hey, I'm Yessie. On this channel, we talk about minimalism and slow living. If those topics sound interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss when I post a new video. And be sure to stick to the end for the tip that has been the most helpful for me when it comes to saving and meeting our financial goals. First up is to fix before buying. In a recent video, I shared with you that we plan on selling our large bedroom set in an effort to downsize and make some money off of it. And as I was going through items in our home, I realized that we've saved a lot of money from first looking at fixing items rather than immediately buying that new item. As an example, our lamps are not necessarily my style, but they were free to us because they were broken and cracked. So what I basically did was I placed putty over them, I chalk painted them, and ta-da, you wouldn't even know that these were broken to begin with. Recently, my camera gave me the black screen of death after I dropped the lens. I searched through tons of videos and did everything that I could to troubleshoot. And I learned that the crown had popped out of place because I had busted the crown. I actually did manage to revive it long enough to film one video, but I say all of this because the important thing here is that my instinct now is to try to fix something before immediately heading to the store or logging onto Amazon to buy that replacement. So the next time you break something, first think about, can I fix this? And maybe look at some ways that you might possibly be able to fix it. Who knows, you might save yourself major cash doing this. Number two is changing phone and internet service provider. This one's a really simple one, and I've actually wanted to do this for a while now, but because part of my job requires me to work remotely, it required things like GPS, hotspot, and fast internet. None of which my job reimbursed me for, but nonetheless required. Now that I won't need these, I can switch providers in order to save more money. I found two alternate companies and between both of them, we should be saving $85 a month. If you personally like the company that you're working with, even just a quick phone call saying that you're considering switching to another company, maybe asking for discounts or whatever offers that they might have is worth a shot. A lot of times you may be able to get a discount from them if you just call and ask. What's the worst that can happen? They say no, you're already paying the same amount you were to begin with, so give it a shot. Number three is to downgrade your phone data plan. So maybe you wanna keep your phone and your internet service provider, but do you really need that super ultra unlimited package? or can you maybe go with a little bit less? I will be eliminating our hotspot since I won't need that anymore, but I also plan to downgrade that unlimited service as a sort of challenge to myself to reduce my internet usage. Because I already have Wi-Fi at home, I really don't need those fancy packages. Number four, I'm actually super excited about this one, is selling my personal vehicle. I've mentioned before that both my husband and I have a personal vehicle, and up until now it's been necessary because we both Currently, I still work, have full-time jobs with very sporadic schedules. But now that that's gonna change, I'm super excited to sell my vehicle because this will cause a cascade of other savings. Having a vehicle means that you have to pay for maintenance, insurance, oil changes, tag fees, car washes, etc. Often our vehicles and having more house than we can pay tend to be the biggest culprits when it comes to slowing down our savings. Number five is to eliminate storage unit costs. I want to read a statistic to you that I read that just about threw me out of my chair. According to 2018 statistics, there are more than 23 million storage units in the United States. That's one for every 14 Americans. That was in 2018. I can't even imagine what the statistics would say currently. And I get that sometimes it's necessary to have a storage unit, especially if you're gonna be moving, for example. But more often than not, that tends not to be the case and storage units just end up storing stuff that we don't know what to do with or that we just wanna put off, but we end up paying for it every single month. We're paying money to store our stuff when potentially we could perhaps sell these items via online or different ways of selling them and make some money off of them. So eliminating storage unit costs could be a great way to not only sell in order to make more money off of those items that you have have stored away, 
but also reducing that monthly expense. Number six is to opt for virtual classes versus in-person classes. When comparing the cost of a course or a class, of course, it's important to consider the cost of the actual class. But sometimes what we fail to consider is the time that it takes us to actually get ready, to drop off kids, to drive there and back, and the gas money for it. The job that I'm leaving has mandatory meetings every single month that I don't get paid for. And call me a horrible employee, but I never went to those meetings. If I had time, I called in and listened. Because in my mind, it's not just the 30 minutes to an hour. It's all that I mentioned before. And I wasn't getting paid for it anyway. Now granted, meetings are something that most of us don't enjoy anyway, but you can also apply this for things that you do enjoy. So for example, maybe finding an online workout versus in-person, if that works for you that is, or finding whatever course that you want to learn online. An example for me is I definitely need to learn about photography, because I kid you not, sometimes it's taken me up to an hour to take a thumbnail photo because it's too blurry, it's too bright, or it's too dark. All this stuff about aperture and shutter speed, I it sounds like foreign language to me, so I definitely need a photography class or course. But you better believe I'm going to be hitting those free tutorials right here on YouTube. While we're on that topic, I'd love to hear in the comments, what is something that you have learned for free here on YouTube? Let me know in the comments below. Number seven is cheap entertainment. In my search for cheap stuff, I had become aware of so many events locally that I had never even heard of. Things like parades for different holidays, arts festivals, and free light shows during Christmas. Even our library has an event calendar with free activities for both children and adults. And of course, there's always a good old picnic at the park or the backyard. Entertainment does not have to cost anything. My absolute favorite entertainment is hiking and walking along trails, and it's completely free. So check out your community's event calendars and free resources. Number eight, I shop and sell kids clothes at consignment shops. I've been purchasing used clothes for me and for my family for a while now, but one of the things that I've started to do recently is selling our kids clothes at a consignment shop. So basically what I've been doing is selling the items that they don't need anymore for whatever new items that they might need. I get money back for those old items to put towards the new items, making their clothes super cheap and sometimes even free. There are also lots of online groups that swap old kids clothes. And of course, thrift stores are a great option. Number nine is ordering groceries online. Though I've been criticized by the older generations for taking the easy or the lazy route when it comes to mundane things like grocery shopping, I am definitely a fan of ordering groceries online and using the pickup option because I can still use my coupons, I can shop for the sales, and I can avoid any random purchases made out of curiosity. I find that for me, buying groceries online makes me much more conscious of a budget because I'm actually seeing the total as I'm adding items. So it's basically adding up as I'm shopping rather than at the end while I'm at the checkout counter wondering how in the world my total got so high. Number 10 is having a garden and drying your own herbs. Every year we've had a garden and sometimes we end up having surplus. So I recently learned how to can veggies and I was shocked at how easy it was to do and why I had never done it before. Having this skill of being able to garden and grow our own veggies means that we reduce a category that for a great majority of us tends to be a pretty big category for expenses. And not only that, but learning how to can means that we'll be able to have veggies and food for a longer period of time. And personally, I found that even though I had very little skill when it came to gardening a few years ago, I found that herbs were actually pretty easy to grow. And drying your herbs means that you're not having to constantly buy these items. You don't have to be an expert gardener, but the more you practice at it, the better you will get. Number 11, simplifying hair care and skincare. As far as my skincare regimen, it's very, very minimal. It's pretty much coconut oil. That's pretty much about it. But about a year ago, I finally took the plunge at trying something that I had been wanting to do for a while. And I dyed my hair balayage style. Basically I bleached like the bottom ends of my hair. And I had no clue that this was going to require a lot of maintenance. I just figured you bleach the bottom, it grows out and you're done. No, no, you have to buy special shampoos and it requires tinting and all these things that I didn't know I was getting myself into. That was not for me. I'm glad that I tried it, but now I know that that was a mistake and it was definitely not for me. So as you can tell, I've dyed my hair dark again and I do not plan on buying any more special shampoos and even conditioner for that matter. Before I had dyed my hair, I actually did never use conditioner. I would place a coconut oil hair mask on my hair about once a week before my shower and it helped keep my hair nice and soft and shiny and healthy. So no more complicated skincare or hair care regimens for me. Number 12 is to split the cost of bulk items. 
Since I'll be home more, it means that I'll be cooking a lot more. And one of the things that my mom and I have actually done for a while is that we'll actually split certain items that we don't think that we're going to be going through. So she has a Sam's Club membership. There's others like Costco and other stores that basically sell in bulk. And we basically just split certain items. So like, for example, if you don't think that you're gonna finish this huge tub of oatmeal, you can split the cost with somebody else. Or you can do what I do and just totally mooch off of my mom's Sam's Club membership because she pays for it and I just get the cheap toilet paper. Thanks, mom. And lastly, as a bonus for sticking to the end is delayed gratification with a spin. Delayed gratification just means that we recognize that we want something, but we force ourselves to wait, just like an adult forces a child to wait after dinner before eating dessert. Where I have used this to my advantage is that I set a financial goal with a deadline, and if and only if we meet that goal, then I can buy a particular item that I've been wanting but it's not a necessity. So for example, I had wanted a Vitamix blender for a long time because I can make soups with it, ice cream, and super creamy smoothies with seeds like flax and chia completely pulverized. But I made a deal with myself that I could only buy one if we paid off our debt by a certain date. The blender then became a prize, a constant reminder when I went to the store and I wanted something, that there was something else that I really wanted that would actually serve me for years down the road. So instead of going for the pointless pack of gum, I would put that towards my goal with the prize in mind, my Vitamix. So for me doing this, it's ultimately a way of keeping me on track with my financial goals and keep me motivated. But it's also a reminder that it's okay to spend my hard-earned money on larger purchases that I may otherwise feel guilty for buying. I think unfortunately sometimes when it comes to saving money, we can go to extremes. We can go to the extreme of we're saving too much and then we're feeling guilty if we're actually making a purchase that will make us happy. Or we go to the other end and we're spending so much money when we don't even know what our statements are on our credit cards, for example. So for me, delayed gratification really kind of keeps me away from just buying things without really paying attention to what I'm purchasing, but also allows me to remember that it's okay to spend my money and it's okay to give myself a treat every now and then if I'm meeting certain goals. I thank you so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. Also be sure to let me know your great savings tips down in the comments below so we can all learn more ways to save more money. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.